The formation of the Rebel Alliance was a long and somewhat painful process, although central leadership was provided by centers like Mon Mothma, Bill Organa, and Garmbel Iblis, the nature of the Empire meant that a lot of organization and also military action had to happen on the local level, led by what the Alliance termed as sector forces, although they didn't often match up with sectors especially closely. The term is what a central guide to warfare calls, in the case of the Rebels, more politics than reality, although with other governments in the galaxy, sector forces were typically how things were organized. Comparing the Rebel Alliance to their predecessors as the main opposition to the main galactic government, the CIS, the Rebellion lacked a full government structure. They had a chief of state who was unelected and had largely unlimited executive power, but they lacked the same political institutions the CIS or Republic had. It was often suggested that the Rebels should try to institute their own galactic government, and today we're going to talk about why this was the case, and the reasons that they didn't do it. This largely comes down to the importance of appearance to the Rebel Alliance. The war between the Rebels and the Empire would never be decided in their favor on a purely military basis, and the Rebels needed more than anything to win the war of public opinion. When seen this way, Mon Mothma's refusal to set up a full government in exile, or a parallel government to the Imperial Senate, similar to the CIS's, makes a lot of sense. Mon Mothma argued that, while the ultimate goal of the rebellion was to establish a democratic government, there were several glaring issues with following the model of the CIS. For one thing, the CIS's parliament was largely ineffectual, and that would be the same with a potential rebel senate in exile. Their ability to effectively organize and enact policy would be limited, since the alliance did not tend to control worlds in the traditional sense. Any world that fully declared for the rebellion would be quickly squashed by the empire, especially early on as was done with what we know as the secession worlds, worlds that, upon the declaration of rebellion, tried to fully leave the empire and declare themselves as members of a kind of rebel government. Usually, again especially early on, worlds would have rebel cells set up within them while still being more or less officially within the empire. We can kind of see what happened with Alderaan, where they still had representation within the imperial senate, but were more or less members of the rebel alliance. Primarily, Mon Mothma wanted to avoid the perception that the rebel alliance was simply another iteration of the CIS. Because they're the two consecutive rebel quote-unquote movements in the galaxy, the rebels sometimes do get conflated, even out of universe by the fanbase, with the CIS. But it's important to remember the goals, means, and motives of the groups were pretty diametrically opposed. Even though there were some CIS remnant groups that joined the rebels, the rebellion was intended to restore the Republic in its pre-imperial form, whereas the CIS had intended to break off and form a separate government entirely. The rebel alliance was made up of many loyalists who fought the CIS in the Clone Wars just as fiercely as the later Palpatine loyalists did. By setting up a full government in exile, the alliance would be playing towards two primary connected problems. One was that, with the alliance set up as a full, opposed government, Palpatine would be more easily able to draw those comparisons to the CIS, that they were trying to take down the Empire as a whole, rather than just him and his installed power base as an illegitimate ruler of a perverted version of the Republic, as the Essential Guide to Warfare calls it. From that, we can see the second part also coming out here. By setting up an alternative government, Mon Mothma and the Rebel High Command would be acknowledging Palpatine and the Empire as a legitimate ruling body in their own right. Within the political context of the rebellion against the Empire, Mon Mothma was effectively intended to be the legitimate Republic Chief of State, opposed to Palpatine, albeit with emergency powers that were set to terminate when Palpatine was deposed, rather than ruling in parallel as leaders of two separate groups. The Imperial Senate under this view essentially was the Rebel Senate, and then Mon Mothma was more or less meant to be the Chief of State of that, where they're trying to get rid of the Emperor, the Moths, and the other installed power base of the Empire rather than the entire imperial government, which was itself the continuation of the Republic government that the Alliance was trying to restore. This is why we see members like Bail Organa remaining in the Imperial Senate, and Mon Mothman and Garnbel Iblis did this earlier as well, until they were forced to leave or blown up on Alderaan. The key really comes down to highlighting the differences between themselves and the specter of the droid armies that came before them, which the galaxy still hadn't recovered from. The rebels needed to be seen as fighting for what was good in the Republic and preventing Palpatine from destroying it rather than being seen as opposing the core institutions of the Republic that transitioned into the Empire. The Rebel High Command was, in a sense, as close to a government in exile as they could realistically plan to do, although 
Mon Mothma's position as a quasi-dictator in that, which concerned even her allies like Garmbel Iblis, was often the subject of imperial propaganda during the rebellion. Either way, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, if you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, or turning on notifications to get alerts for new videos. We're going to keep trying to get as close to daily content as we can from here and my gaming channel Cory Loses throughout the rest of December, so keep an eye out for that. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.